Okay, so good morning everybody and uh, welcome to the second test of the BPM5. So we test fired it three times so far. Uh, the plan for today is to do it uh, another up to seven times depending on how it goes. And uh, the main goal for today <coughs> is to, uh, to test out the, uh, the new, the second injector and to, uh, <coughs> to verify its operating point and to see if uh, if it oscillates at, as bad as, as last time at uh, low feed pressures. And then uh, the secondary objective is to check the uh, automatic pressurization system. And I think we have to be very clear about that this is not a uh, this is not the DPR system. This is an automatic pressurization system. It only pressurizes the tanks initially. The, it, it doesn't run during, uh, during the, uh, the burn. And uh, of course, the, uh, another objective for today is to test out the, uh, the jet wane. So we have a copper jet wane and we have a graphite jet wane, which we will, uh, I think we'll uh, install them during the, the first burn. So we're sure we get data on them. So the first burn is a short burn, seven seconds or so. Um, but we need to make sure that we, we get the data on the uh, jet wanes. And then we'll uh, evaluate them afterwards to see how the, uh, they survive the first test. And uh, if they survive, we'll install them for a, a longer burn also. My name is Fleming and I'd like to tell you a few things about the objectives of today's test. Um, for the first burn, or actually before the first burn, we got to test for the first time uh, an automated pressurization system. Normally, uh, when we run these tests, the tanks in the fuel, uh, the, the pressure in the fuel tanks is uh, built up uh, as a manual process. There's a guy with a helium pressure tank and a manual regulator, he looks at a gauge and uh, gets us the pressure we want. And this time on the fuel side we have uh, uh, tried automating that process uh, so that we can simply enter a target pressure on a screen and there will, uh, there's a control system to control the helium flow and uh, build up the desired pressure. So that ran for the first time and uh, the good news was it uh, worked. Uh, there wasn't any uh, significant overshoot on the control system, it, it uh, had good accuracy. Um, after this pressurization process, uh, the pressure kept uh, creeping up and uh, we take that as a sign that there must have been some leak before be between the, the high pressure uh, helium source and uh, the fuel tank. So um, uh, for that reason we, we don't want any creeping pressure so we won't uh, test the system again today. But uh, we'll go back, take a look at the telemetry, uh, try and figure out whether that was a software or a hardware bug, and uh, work it out. Tank pressure is 20.6 bars. This time we're doing it manually, 
since the automatic system had a uh, malfunction earlier. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, jet vanes. So in order to fly with jet vanes, uh, the big challenge is to find any material that can actually handle uh, the jet exhaust without just disappearing. And um, we've tried one vane in copper and one vane in graphite. And uh, we've flown copper before on the sapphire rocket, but uh, this engine is very different in a number of uh, ways. It burns much hotter around uh, 2,300 Kelvin, where Sapphire was around 1,000. Um, on the other hand, the thrust is lower, so there's simply less of a mass flow for the uh, jet vane to withstand. And ultimately, the burn will be much longer. Sapphire was burning for 11 seconds, and uh, we would like to run uh, the BPM-5 for 50. <coughs> so combining all these differences, uh, <coughs> it wasn't obvious uh, beforehand whether a copper vane could actually uh, take it or not. So uh, we gave that a try and uh, the tip melted off. So um, uh, apart from um, a very beautiful uh, green uh, color of the exhaust uh, where the copper was simply burning, uh, that actually didn't work out. We also tried uh, graphite and that looks much uh, better. The graphite vein uh, has some erosion. It, it's like it gradually disappears, and that is that is to be expected. But uh, it hasn't broken off yet, so um, uh, it has uh, lasted the two first burns, and it is uh, still big enough to be uh, capable for steering. So uh, we'll keep burning it today. Uh, see how it turns out. See if maybe we can improve the geometry a bit to uh, achieve better wear. Um, but this definitely looks like our best candidate now and um, we are also considering uh, other uh, alternative materials but um, so far graphite is a success. So we're now packing up after four burns today and uh, one of today's big topics was that the injector is uh, new. So compared to the injector we've used previously, the uh, 120 holes through which we feed uh, locks have been drilled to 0.9mm uh, this time, they used to be 08 so this means that the injector can now feed the same amount of locks with a smaller pressure difference. It also means that we need to rerun experiments with uh, uh, locks tank pressure versus fuel tank pressure um, because it's important in the engine to obtain the right mix, uh, the mixture, the right mixture ratio of uh, oxidizer and fuel. So we've been wanting to run uh, tests to get that right. The motor, obviously, 
will burn anyway, uh, as it does very reliably. So um, getting the um, fuel oxidizer ratio right is about getting those uh, extra 5 to 10%. Um, it's been a day of mixed experiences. We've had a, a few hardware and uh, software issues, but we've also had uh, two completely uh, nominal burns. Um, and uh, the graphite jet vein uh, survived them all, though it had some wear and tear, and at one point it was uh, damaged by the igniter, which uh, obviously gets uh, shot out of the engine as it starts, and uh, it's a known issue that it can hit the injector, it can hit a jet vein and damage it, so uh, we'll be working on a, a better design to mitigate that. Thanks for watching.